we want to determine the frequency response of this circuit. The input is this voltage source here, U of t. The output is Y of t, the voltage across this 3 ohm resistor. Since we're looking for a frequency response, what we want is the ratio of the output phasor as a function of frequency to the input phasor as a function of frequency. So we're going to find H of j omega, which is going to be Y as a phasor as a function of omega divided by U as a phasor as a function of omega. This means we're going to need a frequency domain circuit. So let's convert the circuit to the frequency domain. The input is still a voltage source. That voltage is U, a phasor, as a function of omega. The impedance of the capacitor is 1 over J omega C, which is 1 over J omega 1 sixth, which is 6 over J omega. Remember that omega is staying as our independent variable. The 3 ohm and the 6 ohm resistor are in parallel. They can be combined to an equivalent 2 ohm resistance. And our output is the voltage phasor Y as a function of omega across that combination of resistances. This is now just a voltage divider. The output voltage Y of J omega is equal to the total voltage across the series combination U of J omega times the 2 ohm impedance over the sum of the two series impedances, 2 ohms plus 6 over J omega ohms. So, Y over U is the frequency response, H of J omega. And to simplify things a bit, I'll multiply the top and bottom by J of omega. So this becomes J2 omega in the numerator over 2 J omega plus 6. There's our frequency response. In part B, we want to check the result of part A at very low frequencies, omega approximately zero, and very high frequencies as omega goes to infinity. So this is the frequency response we came up with. If omega is zero, this becomes zero over zero plus six, which is just zero. And as omega goes to infinity, this is J2 omega over J2 omega plus 6. As omega goes to infinity, this term becomes very large compared to the 6. So this is approximately equal to J2 omega over J2 omega. Since these are the same omega, I can cancel those out. So the high frequency gain should be about 1. So now we want to check these values against what we'd expect based on the physical behavior of the capacitor's impedance at very low and very high frequencies. So from the circuit, as omega goes to zero, the capacitor looks like an open circuit. So this is U at J0, omega is equal to zero. The capacitor open circuits at low frequencies. The 2 ohm resistance here is this 3 and 6 ohm resistance in parallel as it was before. So this voltage is Y at J0. Since there's no current through the open circuit, this has no voltage. So H of J0 is equal to 0, which luckily agrees with our result from our frequency response. And as omega goes to infinity, the capacitor looks like a short circuit. So this is U at J infinity. The capacitor shorts. This is still a 2 ohm equivalent resistance. This is Y at J infinity. KVL around here says that this voltage is just equal to this voltage. So that's equal to U at J infinity. So H of J infinity is the ratio of the output at that frequency, Y at J infinity over U of J infinity. Since those are the same, this ratio is just equal to 1, and that also agrees with our frequency response. Finally, let's check the cutoff frequency of the circuit. Now we can find that from the frequency response, but I actually think it's a little bit easier to notice that for a first order circuit, the cutoff frequency is one over the time constant. And for an RC circuit, the time constant is the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor times the capacitance. So if I kill the source, look at the equivalent impedance seen by the capacitor, this is an equivalent two ohm resistance. So REQ is equal to two ohms and tau is equal to 2 ohms times the capacitance, which is 1 over 6 farads. 
which is one third of a second. So I would expect omega c to be three radians per second. But just for kicks, let's check to see what this is compared to what we'd get from the frequency response. This is our frequency response. By definition, the magnitude of h of j at the corner frequency omega sub c is one over the square root of two times the maximum value of h of j omega at any frequency. We already saw that the maximum value of this was one, so this is just one over square root of two. One over square root of two is equal to the magnitude of this at omega sub c, so the magnitude of the numerator is just two omega sub c, the magnitude of the denominator is the square root of the real part squared, 6 squared, plus the imaginary part squared, which is 2 omega squared, and that's at omega sub c. Let's go ahead and plug omega sub c equals 3 into this. So 2 times 3 over the square root of 6 squared plus 2 times 3 is 6, 6 squared. This is 6 over 6 square root of 2 those cancel, so this is true, and this actually is also the cutoff frequency based on our frequency response.